I am surrounded by a sea of blue here to my right. The ladies of Zeta Phi Beta are here worshiping with us. Let's thank God for them. Yeah. I must have been in the spirit this morning. I got blue on, blue jeans, blue shoes, blue towel. My slides are blue. You're going to see here in a minute. So it's just a sea of blue this morning. So I'm talking about stewardship. Stewardship is all about how you... this. For November, December, it's all about how you manage moments, manage opportunities, manage your money, manage your time. And today I'm going to talk to you about how to break the cycle. Because when it comes to stewardship, many of us mismanage or we just find ourselves. How many of you ever find yourself stuck in a cycle? Whether it's a financial cycle or an emotional cycle or a relational cycle. Just any kind of cycle and you, you got to break it. You find yourself dating the same way spending like you're, you're financially you're good and then something falls out it's called the end of the month and you're just praying god let the let the last of the month get here or however when you get paid and you want to break that cycle in your relation and just not even dating but even in every relationship all your relationships are good until adversity hits then adversity hits you ow, y'all just ready to crawl, call each, uh, claw each other's eyes out it's just something happens a cycle is something that keeps you going and you feel like you're doing good then it pulls you back in how many of you have been whitewater rafting before? If y'all ever want to go back, I, I owe the water one more trip at least. I do, because last time I went, I almost died. And I can't, I can't go out like that. I can't let the water get me. Okay, I'm going back. We had the coolest, uh, our guide was the coolest person ever. Everybody else's guide was given. This is probably the third, fourth time I went. Everybody else's guide was giving them stories on, not stories, but just tips on how to put your life jacket on, how to do X, Y, Z. He looked at us and the, the guys that were with us. He said, oh, y'all got this. He said, we're going to be all right. He didn't give us not one explanation. Not one. Then we got in the water and um, I wish he had her. As soon as we got in the water, one of the guys fell in. And after the guy fell in, I tried to grab him and pull him back in, but we were going over this thing and we hit this rapid. When we hit the rapid, I fell out. And I don't know what you call those things, but it's a thing that it just, you get caught in and it does you like a spin cycle. What is it called? Undercurrents. I don't know what it's called. But I was just going in a circle. And so I would go down and boom, it would hit me against a rock and then it shoot me back up. And I found myself trying to stand up, but when I tried to stood up, stand up, it made it worse because I slipped off the rock, and it was just slamming me against the rock, and it was an awful experience. And I thought in my head, I didn't come to die. And my mind went back to a couple times ago when we had a, a great instructor, and he said, if you ever find yourself in a rapid, instead, don't stand up. He said, get in a ball, and when you come up, break out of it. And so I got in a ball, and sure enough, broke me out of that cycle and I, I couldn't finish the thing because I was I drunk all that water and it just I was depleted but that's what cycles feel like yes. it's like you're in this thing where it's just beating you against a rock you're just beating your head against a wall nothing you're trying is working you feel good for a moment then you pull back in well today I'm going to show you what to do when you're tired of being tired and you're sick of being sick y'all probably never been there before right so just take notes for somebody else and just tell them my pastor talked about this. It may help you one day down the road. But just in case you're there or you ever get there where you're just like, I'm tired of being tired and I'm sick of being sick. Yeah. I'm going to give you a couple things on what to do. And last week I talked about a prophet named Elijah with a J. This, one, this week I'm going to talk about his, uh, the guy who came after him, his successor uh, named Elisha. Both of them had an encounter with a widow woman who was at her wit's end. And... They encountered her and they gave her, he gave her instructions on how to live and it changed her complete life. So go to 2 Kings chapter 4. We're going to start at verse 1. And I'm going to give you some principles of how to break a cycle in your life. All right? So here's what happens. Now the wife of one of the sons of the prophet cried to Elisha. Now she, he could have said she spoke to her, but I want you to feel her, her emotion. I want you to feel her desperation. And imagine somebody who doesn't have anything. Imagine somebody who's at their wit's end. The Bible said he, she cried to Elisha. Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Now, you got to think about this. She's not leading with her need. 
she's leading with her heart. She's trying to pull on his heart. This man served you. He feared the Lord. Now, here's the conjunction, junction, what's your function, educator. But the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Now, some of y'all have been fine right there because they could take your kids everywhere, anywhere they want. They've been getting on my nerves anyway. You can take them just here. I'm starting my life over again. But now she loved, she must have loved them. She said, they come to take my two children. And Elisha said to her, what should I do for you? Tell me what you have in your house. And she said, your servant has nothing. Let's put a pin right there. Many times, many of us minimize the beginning of our miracle, the beginning of our turnaround, the beginning of our confidence, the beginning of what God wants to do, yeah. because we minimize what God wants to do in our life. She said, I have nothing except yeah. a jar of oil. What is your nothing except? What is the thing that God wants to use in your life? And you said, I don't have nothing but a smile. I don't have nothing but a good personality or nothing but went to school for a few years. I, I don't have nothing but an analytical mind. I don't have anything but this drive that I can't get rid of. I don't have anything but this dream. God wants to use your nothing but or nothing except. But here's how to break the first thing to do to break that cycle. Get an objective set of eyes on your problems. Many times people with the same problem as you, you all do nothing but just we co-sign each other's emotions. Elisha could have got stuck on, what? You the wife of my servant? You the wife of my employee? And just, no, no, he would have missed the moment because you're going to see in the moment, Elisha didn't give this woman any moment, any money. He gave her wisdom. If you're caught up in the emotion of the moment, you may give what's not needed in that moment. And you may prolong the situation versus doing what God wants to have done. You need someone who is empathetic. I can feel your pain. I, can, I may not have ever been through it. And I'm going to help you walk through it. Because here's the thing. They're not emotionally involved in your situation. When you want to get somebody emotionally involved in your situation, you really don't want somebody to just co-sign with what you're doing. Um, I had a job once. Anybody had a job with us? person on your job you couldn't figure out why they didn't like you you just know they didn't and they were kind of nice nasty with it they were real they were nice but they were just this subtle undertone with everything they said you just feel like i know you're not for me i know you not on my side i know you're real nice but i can't put my finger on it you know you halfway got the holy ghost and you can you can feel what's going on what they said that search said you have holy half hood like you got you got a little jesus <laughs> but you still got hands that run through you. You still got, you know, you know how to cuss. You know how to use these. You know how to, you got to clap back in your spirit. I had a job and my, this guy, I knew he didn't like me and he was uh, nice. And the thing is, um, I'm used to being a minority on my job. So most of the people on my job didn't look like me. And so when I finally found somebody who did, I thought this guy was going to be my mentor. And he was not. He didn't. He was not my mentor. As a matter of fact, he, he, man, he just ripped apart everything I did. Every time I talked in meetings, he said, you know that we're easy on you in that meeting. I'm like, good Jesus. I mean, what, what, Jesus, the last freed slave just mad at me because I wasn't born into slavery or something. Like he just, he was just going at me. And I, I went and told my daddy and I said, daddy, I got this dude on my, thank God for parents. I got this dude on my job and he gave me a hard time. I thought my daddy was going to put black on with me. And we just walk up there like, you know, they did a new Jack City. Going to call me. My daddy going to show up on my job. He said something. He said, Jason, people normally don't not like people for no reason. That's what I said. He said, have you ever asked the guy what that's a problem with? And finally one day, I just said, here's what happens when you have problems. We talk to everybody. <laughs> so I finally, I said, man, what is it? I said, man, what did I do to you? He said, you do nothing to me. He said, you walk around here, your, your shirt, you, you dress nice. Oh, he's he think I dress nice all that because he, man, I don't know. He wore the same jeans every day. So I thought he, he didn't have no complex. He didn't care about that. He said, man, you'd rather look good and be good. He said, man, they're going to eat you apart because you don't know this stuff the way you should. And instead of just being a good, I, you do know I talk for a living. He said, instead of just being a good presenter, you have a good can presentation. But he said, I'm nervous when you go on these, uh, when you go present to clients, they're going to ask you questions that you can't talk your way out of. And he said, you won't listen. I'm like, geez. 
I would have never had that conversation had I never had an objective, objective set of eyes look at my problem. Whenever you're going through, you got to find someone with wisdom who cares. Someone with wisdom who cares is going to take the time with you to walk you through where you are. Because when people care, they take the time to help you with your situation. And here's the crazy part about people who are wise with objective eyes. They hardly ever give you the answer you're looking for. Elijah, the woman says, the creditors are coming to take my children. He didn't ask what their name, what, yeah. what's the name, look, look, buddy. He didn't ask their names or nothing. He said, what do you have in your house? He wants to locate the answer that's in her house. Elijah didn't give her anything. He caused her to be connected to something that would change her life. He said, I want you to look within. All right. So here's the next thing. You got to suspend your opinion. And listen to wise counsel. Oh, this is hard for many of us in this room. Because we are full of opinions. Verse 3 says this. Then he said, go outside. Let your neighbor say, go outside. outside. You've been in long enough. All right. He said, go outside, borrow vessels from all your neighbors. All your neighbors. Empty vessels and not too few. Then go in and shut your door behind yourself and you and your sons and pour into all the vessels. And when one is full, set it aside. Wise counsel will suggest that you go outside. Go outside means you got to open your mind. You got to put your pride to the side and open your mind to something you've never thought about or something you've never done. He said, go outside and borrow vessels from your neighbors. Now, That, Lord, neighbors, it may be a loose term. How many of you have neighbors in here? How many of y'all talk to all your neighbors? You you probably do. (laughs) She probably does. You don't know, Shannon with an A, she's that neighbor that knows everybody. They can't go over here. No, no, they work. No, they don't work there. They work here. She knows everybody. That's Shannon with an A. Everybody who's not Shannon with an A. (laughs) You probably don't speak to all your neighbors. I don't fool with her. <laughs> he don't cut his grass. You got all kind of stuff. They kids leave bikes in everybody's yards. Like you know, you know all the neighbors that you don't talk to. See, he said, I know you, I need you to go and expand your network to people you may not necessarily speak to. Notice her, the credit is still coming. The, the, the call is probably still ringing. You know, you're just sitting here in church and you're Jesus and them 188 numbers. And they just still, they're ringing in church. They, the, the letters are still coming. The credit is still coming. Nothing has changed, but God's changing her. Yeah. I need you to go talk to your neighbors. You know, talk to your neighbors. And I need you to go borrow vessels. Uh-huh. I need you to go speak. And here's what happens when you begin to speak to neighbors. You, have to, you know what you have to learn how to do? You got to learn how to articulate what it is that you're going through. And what it is that you're trying to do. Right. You don't have to beg in this season. You got to say, because you've asked your neighbors for, to, why do you need this? Why do you need a vessel? Well, hey, this is the season I'm in in my life. And it's breaking your pride down. And I'm learning to be assertive in this season. I'm learning to say no in this season. I'm learning to speak to people I don't normally speak to. I'm trying to make major decisions. And what, here's what happens is you start to expand yourself. Because wise counsel is going to tell you, go outside. Yeah. Wise counsel teaches you how to grow what you have and notice it said at the end when one is full set it aside wise counsel always going to tell you don't move fast don't have a knee-jerk reaction to your situation because you know this when the creditors are coming and when things are not working out you want to move quick fast in a hurry i went and told this man the creditors about to come and he asked me about some oil what does that have to do with these credit did he want a sandwich like his predecessor i heard he asking widows for a little bread and stuff like that you were here last week, you know what I'm talking about. The hardest thing for many of us to do when we're going through, it's not hard for many of us to admit we have a problem because we are good in this society. We post them all day. Pull your social media. People are posting their problems. We're telling people our problems. You know what it's hard to admit? It's hard to admit that how we're trying to solve our problems is not working because whenever a new option is presented, we always try to add our flavor to it and make it our own. And it ends up being the exact same thing we were trying to do. 
we can point out all the things that are not right and that, that factor into our situation. And this is why I am the way I am. And this would work if X, Y, Z would, would happen and all these different things like that. But you got to learn how to listen. Look at your neighbor and say, do you listen well? And they didn't say anything back to you, did they? <laughs> the reason the majority of us don't listen well it's because most of us, to be honest, we are absolutely correct. You are correct. Your problem is your problem. You are not crazy. They probably don't like you. Yes, you have financial problems. Yes, X, Y, Z has happened. The challenge is we struggle with really finding solutions that correct the problem and then having the wherewithal to execute them. Friday, basketball season, I'm having time in my life. We were watching a character play Friday night. I was watching Black Men play, and I was sitting beside Brandon, and I was screaming, man, cut here, go here, do that. Put the ball in my hand. <laughs> hey, I don't have the wins you have. If you play basketball with me in this season, I'm not fighting you, but I'm going to foul you. I've lost a step or two, but that's life for many of us. We can point out everybody's problems, our problems, but we don't really have the solution or the wherewithal to fix it. Which opinionated. And there's nothing wrong with an opinion. But it's a complete difference. Hear me when I say this. It's a complete difference coaching a person with, an, with a vision than arguing with somebody who just has an opinion. A vision is somebody who has a picture of a preferred future. An opinion is somebody who just thinks this is what you should do. And it may or may not work. Wise counsel helps you by teaching you, teaching you. I'm always on Isaiah about math. I'm like, we talk, I like math, and um, he's better in sciences, and I'm always on him about math. And his, I said, man, do you go to your teacher? Do you go to, and apparently he is. And I was sitting in the uh, car with one of his uh, friends, and they both had the same math teacher. And the friend rolled their eyes, and they said, oh, did you take the math test? And he said, yeah. He said, we ask him a question, but every time we ask him a question, he gets frustrated with us in two seconds. And his friend said this, and I had to, you ever had to apologize to your kids? I had to apologize to Isaiah because the friend said, our teacher is always telling us what to do instead of teaching us what to do. The challenge with many of us is because we've never been really led. You've been told what to do versus how to do it. Clean up your room. I did. But my definition of clean and your definition of clean are two different things. Manage your money. I did. I paid all my bills. I just don't have any money left. You got to set the st standard expectation and then you got to instruct somebody, wise counsel does, on how to get it. So in this season, when you don't know what to do, set your opinion to the side of how you do it. Watch it. Suspend your opinion. And listen to wise counsel because the, the man gave Elisha some, I mean, the, the, Elisha gave the lady some instructions. Here's the next thing you do. You got to buy in yes, sir. and lock in. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 5, look at what she did. So she went from him and just fussed. He didn't even give me no money. Creditors come and he didn't even call him. He know he knows somebody who knows those creditors. My, father, my husband worked for him for all these years. And see, that's what happened. You, that's why you ain't loyal to companies. You're loyal to your companies and they're not loyal to you. They're not taking care of me. She didn't do that. She went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And she poured. You know, it's funny. That it left out the part where she went and borrowed them from the uh, neighbors. You know, she did it. You know, some stuff you don't want to do and you just do it. You don't say nothing the whole time. I really don't feel like doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Some of us treat God that way. God, can you do it? I don't know. And they just, just left that out the whole Bible. And she went from him and shut the door behind herself and her sons. And as she poured, they brought the vessels to her. And when the vessels were full, she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there is not another. Then the oil stopped flowing. Notice, I want to show you what's so important that this woman did. She shut the door on her and her sons after she did what she was instructed to do. This was more for her her and the oil than it was her blocking out the world. You got to learn how to follow instructions, block out, the, block out distractions, and focus. This was a heart issue. Shutting the door is so crucial in this season. 
And it's not about shutting out the world, cutting people off. It's not about all this other stuff. It's about hearing what God is saying and doing it. Many of us are all over the place because we don't know what we're going to do. We don't have a vision. We have an opinion, but we need a vision and we need to buy into a system in a heart. This system will produce regardless of who works it. I want to tell you something. No one can change you. You got to change yourself. I don't care how much people love you. I don't care how much wise counsel. All of us have to make a decision that I'm going to do this. You don't change your behavior until you change what you believe. And you got to block everything out, hear what God has said, and do it, and submit to him and shut the door. Shut out everything. Uh, I, 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 maybe I'll try this if this don't work. Maybe I'll try that. No, I'm going to reprogram myself because I want to hear what God is saying from him and through wise counsel because a lot, a lot of us don't really give God a chance to change us. We say, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try that. Try the last thing God told you. Because you ever find yourself arguing with God and with the people God sends in your life. They're trying to tell you something and you say, no, God, uh-uh, no, that don't make no sense. Can I tell you something about what makes sense to us? It's half time it don't make sense. All we know is what we know and we don't know what we don't know. And God's trying to introduce something new because what we're doing is not working. Shutting the door is taking the option off the table of quitting. Because for so many of us, we quit when things get challenging or when we get challenged, we quit. But when you believe in something, he wants to shut the door and believe in it. You ever had somebody believe in you? Man, when somebody will believe, believe in you, they'll go to toe-to-toe with the police. When somebody believes in you, they'll stand before any judge. When somebody believes in you, they'll expand their network to you. When somebody believes in you, they'll walk with you through your mistakes. When somebody believes in you, uh uh-uh, I'm not going to give up. Even when you give up on yourself, they won't give up on you. God said, I want you to get to that point where you believe in what I'm saying. You believe in yourself. You believe in me. You believe in my word. And you add grace, mercy, and grit into the situation. You got to believe it. That's called buy-in and lock-in. Here's the next thing you got to do. Notice what the woman did after the, it worked, what he told her. It's crazy. It worked. The Bible says this. After it worked, she came to the man of God. You want to break your cycle? You got to flex differently. If she had IG in, 20, in uh, what was that, the year two? I don't know what year that was. <laughs> Whatever year it was. And, and if, if it was 2023 and that worked, that, that pot of oil would have been cash. She'd have been with a wad of cash from this arm to this arm on IG. Like, what? <laughs> She'd have posted all, she'd have bottles everywhere. <laughs> when you break the cycle, you got to flex differently. She didn't tell social media. She told the man of God. She told the source that helped her because that was not the end of the story. He just got her out of the situation, and now he's going to show her how to live. She could have posted her miracle, but rather she wanted to live the miracle out. He told her the rest and it changed her life because watch this. The wrong flex will set you back. The wrong flex will create something that you don't want. You can flex wrong in this season and now you'll be right back and you done posted your flex. And the next month people see you right back where you were. No, I want to see permanent change in my life. Here's the last point and I'm through. After you flex differently. You got to go stand on business. I ain't T.I. little son. (laughs) Let me tell you what it means to stand on business. You got to be about your grind. Take care of your responsibilities. Practice what you preach. Show that you mean what you say and you can back up your claims. Notice what the man put her on business. Look, Look what he told her. He said, this is what I need you to do now. Go sell the oil. Pay your debt. Live off the rest. Sell your oil. Pay your debt. Live off the rest. One more time. Sell your oil. Pay your debt. Live off the rest. She came looking for a miracle and he put her in business for herself. He didn't give her money. He showed this is how you can start something from what's inside your house. First thing he said is this. Sell the oil. Go to work. Grind. Market yourself. Distribute what you got in your house. 
Work on what you got. Hone your craft. Go grind in this season. Don't focus on what you do have. Work what you, uh, what you don't have. Work what you do have. Yeah. First thing he said was to stand on business, you got to grind. The next thing he did, this is uh, humongous. You got to set your right priorities. Yeah. Notice what he did after he said you go to work. He said pay your debts. Boy, this probably ain't no shouting point right here. We probably really ain't shouting the whole message. Yet. He said, I want you to have some character and integrity in what you do. Because we look real crazy flexing and ain't paid people that we owe. You flexing all these places you're going, and they still ain't paid me back. Have character and integrity because here's what happened. He broke the poverty mindset inside of her. When I heard this before, it changed my life. He said, Someone was teaching once, and they said, here's what poverty does. In poverty, you beg, your, you beg your needs and you buy your wants. You beg your needs and you buy your wants. Meaning, I'll beg my electric, my mortgage, and my rent, but I'll go buy something to look good. That makes sense here? Now, I think you can do both. But having the right priority, breaking the right mindset is now, all right, God is he, all right, I'm getting myself together. Let me go pay all of my debts so that I'm not fussing about haters when God starts to bless me when the reality is my haters are nothing more than people I owe and I hadn't done right in the past that I want to celebrate my future when I've not redeemed the things I've done in the past. He said, go pay your debts. Go pay your debts. Set your priorities right. Then he said this, set your lifestyle. After you paid your debts, you and your sons can live off the rest. He said, set your budget off the rest. Make a living. Use your oil off the rest. Your lifestyle now is all right. Now you got a remedy. Every time your vessels are empty, you know what to do. You set, all right, I know how to work, pay my debts, now live. He gave her a rhythm to break the system. That's not just financial. In every season of life, even in your relationship, grind, find a relationship, pay your debts, apologize, do right by people, be a good person, be kind, be considerate, now live. Yes. Gave you a system now to break this so that I can stand on business and do what God has created me to do. Does that make sense in here? Yes. Let me go back to this real good. So number one, get an objective set of eyes on your problem. Number two, this is hard, suspend your opinion. And listen to wise counsel. Number three, buy in and lock in. Number four, hear me please. You watching online in here, flex differently. Yeah. And number five, stand on business. Stand to your feet all over the building. Yes, sir. Thank you for two claps. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> in this season, I believe that God's going to break cycles. Never head bow and every eye closed. If you find yourself in a cycle financially, relationally, or any aspect, the Lord can break it. Yes. In the beginning of your turnaround, what baffled me so is the answer was not what she was looking for. I know that woman was looking for Elisha, Elisha to call her creditors. You pay it off and me and my sons are going to live. No, he helped her locate how she can do what she was expecting somebody else to do. I'm praying that in this season, God give you this drive, this grit, this determination to go be what he created you to be and do what he's called you to do. Yes, you may be in a mess. Yes, you may have creditors. Yes, you know, you may be in a deficit in any season of your life, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. But there is a redeemer. And the biggest challenge, I want to challenge all of us in this room. Submit your opinion to the almighty. Submit your opinion to God. And ask wise counsel. Ask God for his direction. Yes. And then do it. And watch what God says work in your life. Father, we thank you for breaking every cycle in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can y'all sing a little?